Hi, this is Kavita Suresh Kumar and I am going to demonstrate how by downloading the Liberty image from Passport Advantage and using the Docker file available in GitHub, Liberty based Docker image can be built and the Liberty server running inside the Bootu Docker Docker container started using the Liberty base image can be accessed from the WebSphere development tools for Eclipse. Let us start the demo by reviewing the IP address of the Bootu Docker host. The IP is 192.168.56.102. Let us log into the Bootu Docker host. We are in the Bootu Docker host. We are going to build a Liberty base image using the Docker file provided in the GitHub. So let's go to the GitHub repository. Repository URL for cloning is available. Copy that URL. Clone the repository. JIT clone and provide the URL. The repository is getting cloned. So the repository has been successfully cloned. So let us enter into the repository folder. CA Docker and go to WebSphere Liberty then 8.5.5 and then go to production install then go to add so we are going to use the docker file available in the add folder so we have both the docker file and the server.xml is available now we need to copy the the binaries jre and the wlp binaries to this folder let us copy the ibm jre to this folder where we have the docker file. IBM JRE has been successfully copied. Now let us copy the liberty base archive file to the current folder where we have the docker file. We have the docker file server.xml and the IBM JRE image and the liberty base runtime image. Copy the libert base runtime image name. Open the docker file and replace the liberty runtime archive name with the name what we have copied. Let us replace it with the new jar file. So we have the liberty archive jar file name in four places let's replace that in all the four places with the new file name which we have copied let us create a new liberty server with the name sample server instead of using the default server so let's replace the default server with the sample server. So let's start the server sample server. We have done all the changes. So let us save the changes in the docker file. We have successfully saved the changes in the docker file. Now let us build the liberty image docker build minus t and we are going to specify the image name as liberty hyphen base dot dot indicates the current directory where we have placed the docker file so now currently the build context is sent to the docker daemon and the build is in progress Added the IBM JRE to the temp folder and the installation of IBM JRE has started. Installed the IBM JRE, Liberty Archive and then created the sample server. So the Liberty base image has been successfully built. Let us review the Docker image we created. Docker images Liberty hyphen base. We could see the Liberty base image has been successfully created whose virtual size is 583.3 MB. This is because we have used the add instruction and the size of the IBM JRE and the Liberty base archive added to that. 
So let us start a container. Docker run is the command to start the container to which we are going to pass various parameters. The name parameter specifies the name of the container and minus D specifies we are going to run the container in the detached or the background mode and minus P and the various port associations indicates the port association between the boot to docker host and the container and the minus V indicates a volume in the boot to docker host is mounted to a volume with the container then minus T liberty hyphen base is the image name the container has been successfully started let us review the container information docker ps minus a we could see a container by name sample has been successfully created 7 seconds ago and it's up and running 5 seconds you could see the various port mappings so we would want to access the liberty server running in the docker container from the websphere developer tools so let us do the necessary configuration for that docker execute sample here we are going to use the config utility facility available script available and going to install the remote administration script and we wanted to capture the config information in a file so pass a parameter hyphen hyphen create config file equal to and give the path name of where you have the your sample server.xml is available user servers sample server slash config.xml is the name where we want to capture those files downloading has started configuration snippet has started the requested configuration snippet has been downloaded successfully and it provides the information on what has to be added to the server.xml file to review the server.xml and config.xml let us copy that to the host machine docker execute sample cp slash opt slash ibm slash wlp user slash servers slash sample server slash config.xml to slash temp so similarly let us copy the server.xml also server dot xml to slash temp the files have been successfully copied so now let us review them in the local machine first let's review the config.xml file so we are going to use the username as admin user so let's change it to admin user we are going to use the user password as admin password And the default keystore password as liberty. So now we need to provide the for the remote file access the write directory and the read directory path. So first let us provide the write path. So we are going to provide the write path as slash opt slash ibm. And now we need to provide the read path. So the read path also we will be we will provide us slash opt slash ibm. We have done all the necessary changes. Let's save the changes. Now let us review the server.xml. So in the server.xml we need to paste the output we got from the installing the remote administration configuration snippet. So let's go and copy that. So we have copied the information. Let's paste that in the server.xml. Save the changes. Now let us copy the files which we have modified to the appropriate location on the container from where we have copied the files so let's copy the config.xml file to opt ibm wlp user servers sample server config.xml the, the file has been successfully copied now let us copy the server.xml
file has been successfully copied now let us review the logs docker logs and the container name sample so clearly it indicates there the new features has been successfully updated let us try to access the remote liberty server from the websphere developer tools right click click new click server click websphere application server liberty profile server host name is 192.168.56.102 which is the ubuntu host ip address click next user enter admin user provide the password secure port is 9443 click verify click accept for this session we are connecting to the remote liberty server download the server configuration files we have down got all the information click next click finish now we have successfully connected to the remote liberty server running on the docker container let's review the logs now let us go and deploy the sample which is available in the eclipse workspace it's a very simple servlet which is going to just print simple servlet run successfully let us deploy the sample right click run on server and select the remote liberty server running on the docker container click next click finish it is getting published to the liberty server in the web browser url provide the servlet name simple servlet the servlet has run successfully the application has been run successfully now let us go and modify the sample application we are going to do a very simple change like currently the application printer simple servlet ran successfully we are going to add a word modify to that so now it should print modified simple servlet ran successfully let's save the changes so in the logs we could see the sample application has been stopped and updated so let's go and refresh so now we could see it has printed modified simple servlet ran successfully the changes has been updated here we have seen how an application change done in the local machine get reflected on the remote liberty server running on the ubuntu docker docker container thanks for watching the demo